Zambia. Good evening, viewers all over the world. Today, I'm having some game time with a man who's known as the Spanner. Others call him the Midfield General. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm having some game time with Salulani P. I just like the sound. Good evening, Salulani, and welcome to the show. Good evening. Thank, thank you so much. You know, the world has been hit by the COVID-19. I understand South Africa is on a lockdown right now. Just tell me how you've been adapting to the situation and what is the situation like in South Africa? How are you keeping fit and how are you uh, contributing, of course, to prevention of the spread of the COVID-19? Uh, it's been, uh, it's been a, a tough moment for, for us uh, uh, and uh, everyone around, around the world. Uh, you know our our field of of football uh, demands training, and uh, uh, there's a lockdown. Uh, you can't train. You you can't train. You have to train in the house, which is uh, making it more more difficult. You know, but uh, following the program from the coaches and uh, uh, trying to make uh, just trying to keep your yourself fit just to keep your body in shape, you have to do it on your own. Anyone, of course, Zineo uh, Span and Nacho Capit. Can you give me the background? Wow, wow, well, yeah. The Span name came from uh, my, my hood uh, when I was just uh, a kid, when I just started playing, you know, because I was unable to among my midfielders, yeah, my midfielders, yeah, when I'm my teams, you know, my like, yeah. uh, academy, and uh, my midfield, I'm able to to get the ball, I'm able to attack, you know, and then uh, it was easy for me, and uh, I used to, I used to, my friends used to make to find it easy to play because I was making it easy for them, you know. I could unlock anything. I could unlock and screw any anything, any midfield, any midfield that I that I found. Mm. So that's how they gave me the name Spana. Just give us that journey, the first team you played for, and how you got to be a professional footballer, and now you qualify. Well, I started I started my soccer journey in uh, at Winford Academy. It's uh, based in Chazanga. And uh, I started when I was a kid because uh, they used to take uh, uh, kids to be to join the academy. So I was I was one of them, and uh, it happened that uh, I played for an academy for some few years, and then uh, I joined uh, Young Zanako. From uh, Young Zanako, I was graduated to the senior Zanako team. And uh, at some point, I had to come back to, to the academy because of school. Uh, when I completed my school, and then I went back to Zanako. That's how I started my career, uh, my professional uh, career. Were mommy and daddy in support of you playing football? They were uh, very much uh, supportive because uh, they knew the, uh, the kind of... Uh, the kind of living that we were living in the hood. Uh, not most of us were able to to play soccer. Most of them uh, they joined the uh, the gangster life, you know. So yeah. for them, for the for me, for for me to play soccer, when they see me play soccer, they they could support me because uh, they never wanted me to join other things that my our friends were doing, you know. So it was easy for them to understand to say, okay. He's playing soccer. What else? So mm. it was, yeah, it was easy just like that. Everyone, I'm sure even at your academy, you're maybe about 50, 30 players, but probably very few make it to the top level. I want you to give me your secret, yeah. your blueprint. What did you do? What should someone do to reach that level and play professional football, even representing Zambia, playing in a foreign league? Uh, firstly, uh, football needs uh, discipline. Uh, it needs dedication uh, and also the commitment, you know. Uh, uh, I think uh, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, uh, I was given an example by the owner of uh, the academy to say, if you are not disciplined, you end up like this. If 
you stay disciplined, you end up like this. If you you're committed to the game, you end up like this. So I had to choose between whether I be I become disciplined or I just I become indisciplined, you know. And uh, the commitment and the hard work that I I was I, I always put in, it has always been pushing me to to be where I am today. You played in the Zambia League, you've played in the PSL, you've also played amateur football in Zambia. I want you to tell me the differences, the challenges that you face, maybe the differences looking at the Zambia Premier League behind the PSL. Which one is tougher? Uh, which one has better conditions? I want you just to give me your experience. Uh, the Zambia League, uh, we have, we have uh, so much talent. Uh, we don't have so many facilities, you know. Uh, we've got our own type of play as Zambia uh, compared to South Africa. Also, they've got their own type of play, but it's almost similar to, to, to the Zambian one because we come from uh, uh, the southern province of Africa, you know. And uh, also, uh, the academy is also uh, comes in, it matters. The, uh, you find that uh, the academies in Zambia and the ones that are in South Africa, they differ. You, as, as they start when they're still at an early age, you know, and then uh, most, of, most of our academies in Zambia, you find that maybe they're starting maybe at 14, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just now that I've seen at, uh, uh, is it uh, Barcelona? Barcelona, yeah, I've seen I've seen uh, where they start with at a early age now, which is which is good. But I think uh, the most different thing that we have now is the facilities. You know, uh, yeah. in PSL we are able to play matches at night, tw uh, twenty thirty. The game mm. is on. In Zambia we can't play that. When it's raining, when it's mm. raining we're able to play games. In Zambia, yeah. we're not able to play games when it's raining too much. You find that maybe two or three games in a week, they've mm. uh, they've been abandoned because of, of of the rains. But in South Africa, it's very rare. You find that maybe one is just one once in a while. You know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, every player has their best game, and of course, their most difficult game. Which game do you think has been your best game? I always give my best, <laughs> always, <laughs> always. But uh, I can, I can pick out uh, one game. I think uh, I was, I was, I was out for for some time because I was, I was injured, and then I came back. Uh, we played against uh, Super Sport, and uh, that game I, I scored. I think that game I, I did well. Oh. Which 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 do you think was your most difficult game on Abel Atun? Okay, they lost in a Tamush. Wow, there was uh so many so many games that I've played now I can't <laughs> I can't uh figure out I can't pick out one. Okay. There's one game that I think I played the I never played the, my my position. I just the coach said, "You can let's uh, let's improvise. Let's play you on uh, on left back." It was against uh, Power Dynamos at uh, Woodland Stadium. Mm. Yeah, I think that one was was so difficult because uh, I was playing as a left back, and uh, uh, the wingers that I was I was uh, I was meeting was uh, Kennedy Mdenda at at his peak, you know. Uh, there was Sitali, uh, Mulenga Mukuka. Uh, it it was so difficult for me, you know. Mm. Uh, I think first half, the whole first half, I think I could hear the supporters booing uh, outside, you know. And then, uh, but the coach kept telling me to say, "No, you're okay, you can do it." And then when I came second half, I think I picked up a bit, but still, it wasn't uh, it wasn't good. And uh, the recent game that that we played, uh, we 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 met uh, Mares, and uh, his positioning was quite tough for 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 me. And uh, the, 
all of us because we didn't know where he's, uh, he's playing. He was, he was a free low. So mostly he was coming in the midfield, going out. So we didn't know. And he, he gave us problems, you know. And mm. uh, yeah, I think Mares, Mares. Let's discuss a little bit of, of, of your national team. When did you receive your first call up and how was the feeling at the time? So my first call up came in uh, 2013. Yeah, 2013 after playing the the Africa uh, the Africa Cup uh, qualifier for under 20. In uh, we played in Kitwe, uh, and the other game we played in uh, in Mali mm. uh, against Mali. So we played there. Uh, by then, coach, uh, we had coach Kigan and uh, uh, Chris Kaunda and coach Hector Chilombo. And then mm. uh, when we went to Mali, uh, there was a change of coaches. They said uh, Hevrena must, uh, must coach the under-20 together with uh, his assistant, uh, mm. Patrice. Uh, when we played that game, uh, he picked out uh, two games. But he called me, you know. He said, uh, "You've you've played a good game here in in Mali, but I've got uh, enough uh, uh, players on your position. Uh, but I hope I'm gonna I'm gonna summon you for the next uh, for the next uh, camp that will be will be uh, will be uh, grouping, you know. So yeah. they played the Mandela Challenge. After the Mandela Challenge." Uh, there was a friendly in uh, Tanzania, and then I was oh. summoned for that friendly in Tanzania. That was in 2013. Hey, when you go to the national team, who is your roommate? I I share my my room with uh, the captain, the captain for, or uh, the cap who's the captain now, which is uh, Kabasu Chonga. But on a regular day, if you're not training, you have a free weekend. Normally, how do you spend it? If I'm not training, uh. I'm always at home uh, watching uh, games, uh, football games. Uh, yeah, mostly it's just watching football games because uh, uh, you get to the games are they come closer, you know. Yama uh, buya chepa pafupi, so you often get watambako i or maybe watambako i so that. The, you don't make it difficult for the coach to start explaining what's gonna happen, you know. So yeah. I watch football most of the time. Oh, I see. If I may ask, is there any specific meal that you miss back here in Zambia that you can't find in, in South Africa? To me, I think uh, uh, everything is everything is here. Uh, but of course, there are few few stuff that. <laughs> That we miss, uh, that we cannot, we cannot get here. Uh, you can't get uh, Visashi from uh, from uh, South Africa. You, ca you can't get Capenta. Uh, I, I don't see, I don't see Capenta. Yeah. Is there any specific drink that you miss, a Zambian brand that you miss, that you can't find in South Africa? Can be traditional. It can be modern. Of course, of course. Ish. I miss. Uh, I miss Mungoyo. I miss Mungoyo. Uh, even when I even when I come home, I think uh, uh, my family knows that he misses Mungoyo. So I always find Mungoyo when I when I when I come home. What would be your encouragement to that young player who's, who's, who's about to give up? Maybe I have to some my frustrations. Do you want to go to Or maybe I can't change my bench. But I can go up to the professional football. So, uh, Bola, I can't go to my difficulties. It's, it's not easy. And uh, giving up is not, uh, uh, it shouldn't be the, the option, you know? Uh, just pray over it, uh, get a commitment, you know, just fight for it, and then you're going to get it. Thank you very much, Sarulani. It's been nice having you. I wish you success so in much. your near future, and good luck. Have a good night.